Shane here for Deck 3D Printing, and I'm here with Isaac Budman. Isaac Budman of Budman Industries. So, and you've got this this printer here, and as we talked before when I came up, seeing this from afar, I thought this was the Dewalt printer. You know, Kodak is making stuff now. I figured, you know, why not Dewalt? You know, hey, here they're next. So, it is a very interesting design. And the kinematics are crazy on this, so I really want to touch on that. But I want you to tell me about your company, what you guys do, you know, behind this. You talk about a bigger printer. Let's get into some of those things. Let's do it. Um, so Budman Industries is the result of our artistic practice over a couple of years. Um, we are really focused on this idea of art and technology and living at the intersection of the two, because. Art can influence the development of technology, and new technology opens up new ideas about art. And that's sort of where we like to live, is right in the center there. And we get to do both by printing things with 3D printers and also making printers. Um, so that's, that's sort of how we got to this moment in time where we have the Budman Bildini here, um, which is a 500 millimeter by 300 millimeter by 490 millimeter printer. I'd say 490, that's an odd number, but it's just to say. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, looking at this, like I said, you've got the extruder here on the end of a 2040 rail. The entire 2040 rail is moving. It's not the extruder over rail. Correct. Can you talk, like, what was the decision behind that? Because that's so unique. I've never seen anything like that. So every decision here was made with what we call the three M's in mind. Minimal, modular, maintainable. And we wanted to maximize the space so that you weren't having any extra sort of infrastructure on there that wasn't being used. And so the beautiful thing about this is it, the rail can go all the way to the back and get to the back of the build plate with no lost space at all. Um, and so we also really enjoyed the fact that you had these two holes that could be tapped at the end of the V-slot allowing you to put different tool heads on there. And so where it matters, everything has been sort of thought out as to the sorts of things that we as hobbyists or we as creators like to do. Um, we didn't want to create a machine that as the tool heads change or as the board changes and as things get better that you'd have to throw out a machine and get a whole new one. Yeah. So we put a lot of time into sourcing components that really mattered and that were going to last where others might peter out. So you know we have cables on here that are rated for over a million motions. Um, these are the same ones that like Hershey uses on their chocolate factory line. Oh wow, okay. Um, we have the E3D Titan Arrow, which we think is just the best thing on the market. Um, inside you've got the Ulta Machine Einzi, um, okay. and we just think they've made a great product there where you have the right combination of economy and performance. Um, nothing too fancy, but it delivers time and time and time again on great prints. And you got the Trinamic drivers on there, so you end up with a really powerful chip. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I run Trinamics on a bunch of my different, bunch of different variants on different machines, and just the how much better they are over the standard, you know, run-of-the-mill drivers is night and day. So, and this is really quite, I mean, I know we've got a, 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 a presentation going back here. This thing, aside from me hearing this fan, there's no movement at all here. None. Correct. I mean, it is, it's like once I fully modded one of my machines, but we're looking at this out of the box. Out of the box. That's fantastic. I mean, that, that is really good to see. Now, uh, real quick, so on here, it looks like this head is modular. It is. So, because uh, I see there's this uh, this big old nut on here to connect to, almost like a cannon plug style. So you can pull this off, put something else on? That's the idea. Um, you know, it, at the moment we don't have any other tool heads in the works, but the idea is that you would be able to put any other tool head on there, whether it's a spindle, where if you change these out with steel belts or something like that so that you get the dimensional stability you would need with milling. Um, or one of the ones we do like to throw on there is just a printed pen holder. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got Artsy, this, I know. Yeah, yep. right. <laughs> you got this huge build space and you can put a giant piece of paper on there or fabric or anything else and it really kind of opens up the possibilities for experimentation. Yeah, I like that. Now, um, we're going to give it this. So, looking here at some of the motors, you're just using a simple pancake stepper yep. back yeah. here on the what's seemingly going to be our Y this way, right? Um, we say X this way, Y this way. Yes. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, and I said, so in most printers, your Y is what goes back and forth. Right. In most most Cartesian style printers, but you've taken a Cartesian basically 
turn it 90 degrees yep. and now you're going that way. Correct. Um, and that's mostly because we like having the big build platform in terms of things like lamps or even experimenting with paper or fabric, that kind of thing. We like this way, more working like on a workbench. Yeah, like landscape style. Yeah. Landscape style than you would when it's this way. Um, and so that's that's sort of why we made that design decision. Yeah, and like I said, look at, look at the hardware on this. I mean, the cabling, as you said, minimalistic. But I mean, it looks so clean. It, it really does. I mean, I have, you've seen a lot of printers out there, but this is very clean looking. And you're just using a regular old T8 uh, lead screw back there. Um, are you using a larger stepper motors, I guess, for your Y and Z, or? We have a very strong stepper motor on the Z. Okay. Um, because this is, it's all metal construction. Okay. Um, we didn't, oh, so all, all the plates back here, these are all aluminum? That's all aluminum. Yep. Okay. That's all aluminum, powder coated. Um, we didn't want to, we want this thing to last. And as it grows with you, we want it to grow and like last and then you don't have any issues going forward. Um, so it's all, it's all aluminum or um, powder coated steel. Um, but so there's a lot of weight here um, on the lifting aspect of it and we wanted to make sure that we had a really strong motor in there. So I think it's um, a NEMA 14 with something like 56. Newton. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. It is a powerful motor. Um, and then we have the pancakes both on the extruder, the y-axis, and the x-axis because of the weight saving aspect. And we really haven't found that you need a stronger motor there. But again, the modularity aspect, all of these motors use just your JST connector. So if you did want to put a stronger one on there, you definitely could. Yeah, so we're not using those pre-wired motors that are so annoying. Yeah, so, say. Um, so what are we looking at print speed then with these, like on average? On average, so if you throw a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on there, you can get 120 millimeters per second. Wow, okay. Um, but we ship it with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle because it is such a massive build space. And you can get down to that, you know, 0.2 millimeter layer height without an issue with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. But frankly, we're fans of the big stuff. Um, so we typically run ours in the shop with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle on there. Okay. Um, so uh, with those bigger nozzle sizes, you are running at slower speeds now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, because you got longer time to melt. And then you're using 1.75 millimeter filament, looks like. Yep. Okay. And then, so, and this. This plate down here looks pretty sizable, so you're not getting any warp issues there with that? We haven't. No. Okay. Um, I think part of that's because there isn't a heated bed. Um, so oh, so it's not heated. It's not heated. Okay, I didn't catch that at first. So that's why you're using the build tech. That's correct. And build tech comes with it? Or? Build tech comes with it, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and we don't want to use a heated bed because our experience is coming from a place of printing furniture. Uh, stuff cubic meter in size. And what we found was if you try and keep a build plate that size hot, and a chair takes 96 hours to print. That's a lot of wasted energy. Mm -hmm. And so we started looking into mechanical hold options and we have found BuildTech to be head and shoulders the best solution out there. Um, you know, these polycarbonate type um, sheets just do a great job. And besides ABS, we have been able to get a whole litany of other filaments to stick to it. Um, and at this point with all the other options, we don't feel like not being able to print ABS is a big trade-off. Yeah, I mean, I, I only just recently reviewed my first ABS filament. Uh, I do a lot, as we said, I've got my whole bag here of coins. I review a lot of filament. ABS being just among the first now because not many people print with it anymore. Why? Anymore. There are so many options out there and so many flavors of PLA, you know, or PETG now, which is the best between the two of them, True. you know, which is, you know, why even waste your time with ABS anymore? So I understand that aspect of it. So, um, yeah, that, that's where we saw the trade-off, and PETG is our favorite by far. <laughs> yeah, and, and I just recently, uh, from 3D Printing Canada, they sent me an opaque PETG. It was the first I ever got to try out. All of them have always been, you know, transparent or translucent, but having an opaque filament, so it was 3D Printing Canada, and it was it was good stuff. I, I really did like it. 3D so, Canada. Yeah, and they actually have a booth here. Um, yeah, so it was to have that, it was an orange, and it was just a nice, vibrant orange color. You know, again, sidebar, but hey, um, what are we talking, so is this available now, and what's the price point? It is available for pre-order, we ship in September, um, and the price point is 2300 Okay, and this is not Kickstarter, this is straight off your website, so no one's backing anything yeah, here? That's right. Okay. We're, uh, we don't want to do the whole backing game, um, we are already working with our suppliers to go into production, so September is when it's happening, and um, 
we invite people to check it out on the website, budman.com, and we can make this happen. Are you on any other social media, anything like that? Uh, we are on Instagram. That's where we tend to focus our efforts, and that is at Budman Industries. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at, at iBudman. Um, I also recommend following um, our co-owner Stephanie Keith um, at, at Chef Steph Keith on Instagram. Okay. Because one of the things that we do sort of have in the background here is a paste extruder where she has been making some oh. of the most amazing pastries that have been 3D printed that you'll ever see. Well, that, that'll be that'll, that'll be fun to see. <laughs> so, uh, but that's where you'll find us. Okay, great. Well, thank you for the time again, Budman Industries. This is the. Boldini? Bildini. Bildini. Okay, I like the play on that. So uh, thank you for your time. You know, I'm looking forward to see more from you. Thank you.